Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure on behalf of the Business Council of Westchester to welcome you to today's very, very exciting webinar on yesterday's marketing doesn't work today, creative marketing ideas to adopt now presented by our good friends and BCW members at Copy and Art. I'm Marcia Gordon. I'm the president and CEO of the Business Council of Westchester. And it's my honor to welcome everyone here. Just to introduce Copy and Art first. Copy and Art is a full service marketing communications firm based in White Plains. They've been in business since 2011. Happy 10th anniversary, by the way, to the agency. Um, the agency offers full creative capabilities, including strategic brand planning, digital marketing, including social media and websites, multimedia engagement, including video marketing and photography, and internal communications. Copy and Art has won 914 Inc.'s Best of Business and received, this is a, a really big deal, the Inc. 5000 National Award, by the way, in the top half of all US-based privately owned companies and the regional award for the New York Metro area, which recognizes growing privately owned businesses in the region, ranking in the top 2% in the New York region. Copy and Art, we are proud to say as an active member and supporter of the BCW, the Westchester community by participating in local events and volunteering. And today they're gonna to talk about how to learn, as I said, how to refresh your marketing plan with innovative strategies. Um, topics are gonna to include upgrading your social media, revamping your website, interactive web-based experiences, live virtual events and how they can work for you, and benefits of video marketing at, at, and more. And we are, so we have a robust agenda in front of us and we have two outstanding presenters that I have the honor of introducing. Elena Rivera-Cheek is the founder and chief creative officer of Copy and Art. She has worked in advertising for over 20 years, starting her career at some of the largest agencies in New York, where she was promoted to vice president by the age of 30. She started Copy and Art because she could identify what clients loved about ad agencies and what they hated. So Copy and Art delivers on the creative and innovation without sac sacrificing the speed and efficiency clients need. She's also passionate. There's no one more passionate about company culture at Copy and Art and centers the agency on the concept of service service to clients and to one another. She supports the Women's Economic Development Center, WETSI, in Westchester, and has taught classes to entrepreneurs about marketing, branding, and building her, their business. She's a mentoring for WETSI, her honor mentoring, a speaker at SEPA Mujer. She is a patron supporter of the Wildlife Conservation Society and supports other personal causes. Welcome, Elena. And it's also, my, it's also my pleasure to introduce Christina Reyes, who is the Vice President, Creative Director of Copy and Art. She's about to be awarded the Business Council of Westchester's 2021 Rising Stars 40 Under 40 Award. Since joining Copy and Art in 2013, Christina has worked hand in hand with Elena to build a growing team of smart creatives to support the thriving agency business, Christina acts as a cross-functional leader, aligning creative strategy, marketing teams, and results-driven collaboration. She brings a customer-centric mindset honed over almost 15 years of experience from ad agencies and beyond. We're gonna see a little bit more about Copy and Art now. I'm gonna then turn it over to Elena and Christina. Please put questions in Q&A and in chat. We want this to be interactive and Yvette, let it roll.
All right. right. Elena, it's all yours. Enjoy. It's all mine. Thank you Thank so you. much. I'm going to share awesome. screen now. Thank you. We like to have fun. All right. We're going to get to work. Um, Marsha, first, thank you for the very, very warm welcome and the uh, generous introduction. Um, it is our absolute pleasure and honor to be here today. I just lost the number of participants, but I think we're at about 70, which is um, excellent. Excellent. So thank you. Uh, it's not lost on us that our most precious commodity in life is time. And so we thank you for spending an hour of your time with us. So yesterday's market marketing doesn't work today. We know that kind of fundamentally, but do we know what to do about it? The uh, goal of today's presentation is to edge you a little bit closer to um, helping you realize the innovative marketing strategies that could work for your brand and business. We have good news. Advertising is coming back and it's coming back strong. Um, that was a quote taken from a recent Wall Street Journal article about two weeks ago. Um, but I think it is the crux of what we're going to show to you today. It's time to be excited about marketing. It's time to uh, use it as the driver for business um, that it should be. Um, and, and it's no better time to do so. We have a desired outcome today. We have a desired outcome in everything we do at Copy and Art. But the desired outcome today is to really make sure that we're educating and informing you on marketing, the fundamentals and the innovation. Um, it's great to talk about innovation, but if we don't have our fundamentals and the foundation of our house isn't strong, uh, we have work to do. Here's what it isn't. Today isn't a sales pitch. We're not pitching. We're actually not really showing our work so much. I think our goal today is really to add value and to be of service to the audience um, and to educate and to use our subject matter expertise to help you in any way we can. Um, I am gonna ask you for a favor though. Um, and it, we, it will come full circle at the end of this presentation. The one thing I will say, and there are no slides about copy and art. I'll, I'll tell you this. You heard that we won the Inc. 5000 um, the regional award in the top 2% for privately owned companies. We're not owned by a big holding company. Um, we're just growing exponentially and we're small. I would venture to guess that about 95% of the audience may have never even heard of us. So why are we winning? I want you to think of one word. You don't know us yet, maybe. I want you to think of one word that I'll ask you later to just put it in chat. That word is going to help you, and we're going to come full circle on the experiment. But that's about all we're going to say about who we are. We're going to take a look at what we just went through. We're going to look at 2020, the year that changed everything, because I think it sets the foundation for us for a great presentation for you. So we had a global advertising drop of about 9% compared with the previous year at 19 45% of consumers spent more time on social media. We were locked in our homes. We were scared. We were trying to connect furiously because um, in-person connection was lost. Um, that was with our family members, which is the most important part, right? But here we're talking about marketing and brands and products. 26% increase was seen in the online video streaming world. We're not surprised when we hear these things, but I think it, 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 it behooves us not to look at these stats in terms of what we should be doing today and tomorrow. Good news for Westchester is the shop local mindset was supercharged. I think um, the country was rightfully nervous for small businesses. Um, 82% of consumers said they would shop more local after the pandemic. One in five were focused on it in 2020. And 70% of consumers support local businesses by shopping online or a mix of in-store and online. Of course, there was a time there where many stores were closed. So online was the way to go. In essence, 
2020 was the year the world and marketing went digital. What should we know? We should know that while traditional ad spend fell by about 35%, the US, I'm sorry, traditional ad spend fell, fell by 35%, digital ad spend increased. So traditional fell, digital increased. It kind of makes sense for what we saw, but it's good to have some stats around it. What we know is the advertisers that came back to advertising after taking a dramatic pause said that they were looking at more digital channels. And when asked why, they said flexibility and accountability were the reasons. So what does that mean? What that means is when you go digital, you have analytics, you have data, and brands want data-driven decision-making. They want to know, did that ad fall flat? Was it engaging? Did my target audience love it? From that same Wall Street Journal article that we mentioned, we talk about the advertising spending and the rebound that's expected. We're expecting marketers to increase uh, in 21, 15% more, a bigger share going to digital. Marketers seeing a better return on investment for digital and consumers being there and spending more time on digital. All of these facts and figures are interconnected and they serve as a good basis for the recommendations we're gonna make today. This section in one sentence, digital is on fire and it's only getting hotter. I'm gonna ask you a couple, I'm gonna ask you a question. We're gonna do a quick poll here. See if I can do this right. I'm gonna ask you, what were your biggest marketing challenges? We have a couple of the most common answers we see here. Budget, team and resources, inexperience with digital marketing, shifting marketing priorities, maybe in terms of the pandemic, um, higher, you know, leadership in your, in your organization, shifting, just generating traffic and leads in this crazy environment or managing your website to keep it up to speed with maybe more people searching online now. We have great responses coming in. We're at about 42 of 77. We're upwards of 60% voting. I'm gonna try to see if we could get everybody to vote. I think it's important. Part of what we do at Copy and Art is we try never to be generic. And so if we understand a little bit more about your challenges, we can target our content to make sure that it hits some of those challenges. That's our goal. Nothing unexpected here. We have about 77% of you guys voting, 78 now. I'm gonna ask you guys to just pick an answer, whichever comes closest to. Or the one you see most frequently, the one that kind of kept rising to the top. Right. I know picking one is hard, John. I agree. If we didn't say it before, engagement is key in marketing and today and here and now. So please do. We're at about 80% vote. Christina, do you think we could get them to 85%? I think we can get to 85%. I think we can get to 85%. If you haven't voted yet. Pick the answer that best reflects some of the challenges. Maybe it's not. We're going to end this in about 10 seconds. We're at 80%. We have a lot of faith in this group. Nobody yet. 63 of 78 is not bad. You logged on to the webinar. (laughs) All you need to do is pick an answer. We got it. And we're going to cut it here at 80% vote. Surprising? Not surprising. So think about that word that I asked you to think about earlier. We're not surprised when we see budget as the number one constraint. 
Thank you for participating. So let's go back to the presentation here. Budget was number one. Thank you for sharing. 80% of you came through and gave us an answer. Talk about who's here today. So it's important to us that we understand our audience. Like I said earlier, I don't ever want to be generic in our presentation. We have the cut of people who are on this uh, webinar right now. A large portion are in the nonprofit sector. We can understand how uh, nonprofit marketing has its inherent challenges. And then in a pandemic, mm -hmm. um, present even bigger challenges. Advertising, marketing, and PR. So we'll take the compliment. We're happy to have you guys here. Healthcare, where we have a sweet spot and strong hold in uh, advertising, finance, and consulting. So our goal is to actually talk to some recommendations we have specifically for these industries. Now, they're what we could do in a month. We, we spend a lot more time doing research, but some general kind of ideas for these industries that we hope will be helpful. So now that we've set the stage with understanding the year in review, understanding who's here, we want to talk about what are the basics of marketing? Where should you really be starting from? What are the must haves? So we like to start with a quote to kind of set the stage, set a, a frame of mind. Um, and we saw this great quote from the um, VPGM of, mar of marketing in uh, Adobe. And it's on omnichannel marketing, which may seem cumbersome, which may people are curious about because they don't really have a good grasp of what it means. Um, and the way he describes omni-channel marketing is creating connected experiences across every channel, every device, and every location where a consumer happens to be. That's omni-channel advertising at its best. And when you get it right, much like a lasting friendship, you've gained a valuable customer for years to come. And we appreciate that. And, and we really love that because omni-channel marketing, um, you know, when you think about it, it's the experience you're having at every touch point. So when you look at copy and art, you look at our website, our social media, um, even when you step into our offices, it's the same experience. The, the vibe is the same. You get confident, positive, high energy. So our objective is to kind of edge you towards this omni-channel marketing, um, especially with these, it, it may feel like it's something innovative, but quite frankly, when you look at what the fundamentals of marketing are, they really cover this omni-channel approach. Um, but before we get into that, um, we do want to think about the first lesson in marketing is knowing who your ideal customer is. So if you believe in Pareto distribution, 20% of customers can generate 80% of uh, revenue. And uh, we do workshops for a client where we identify our ideal clients. So you don't have to have blanket marketing. It's really about understanding who you're targeting. So your budget, which is, uh, we heard, a key concern for many people, um, we're able to take the most effective use of your budget. So one thing that we want you to think about um, is that the best marketing comes from being the buyer expert, not just from knowing uh, the product, from being a product expert. So why is this important? Um, you know, the important things to understand is your customers, where are they? Where are they at? Um, what are their, their ages? What are they looking at? So people want to get right to creative development but if you don't understand um, time thinking, if you haven't spent time thinking about this and really understanding your customer, your marketing is not going to be as effective. So the best ways through one-on-ones, through market research, which we do with a lot of our clients, and really identifying some key trends um, with how your, your um, buyers are behaving. So now kind of... Understand your your. Hold team. on, hold on. Start again. Okay. So as I was saying, this seems complicated, but really, essentially, when you look at this, you have to understand all the data that's at hand to help you understand um, who your buyers are and how you can connect with them. So this is a nice way. All this slide is all we're trying to show here is the universe of things you can do to understand your buyers, understand the market, to understand what their challenges are and where you can meet them. 
And this, having this information, having this background, having these thought processes is what leads you to understanding what are the fundamentals of marketing? Now that you know who your ideal customer is, what are the best ways to reach them? So, you know, you don't have to do everything in that universe that I showed, but you do have to do these five things. And you might be doing some of them. You might not be doing all of them, or you might not be, you might be doing all of them, but maybe not well. Um, so we really want to talk about starting with a solid marketing foundation. So the great thing about um, web optimization is we're making a lot of these kind of inroads already with our websites. But as we learned in 2020, digital ways to go, it's the first place that your customers are driving to, to understand who you are. And for social media, a key thing, this is the, the easiest, most cost-effective way to be able to reach your customers. With television, you'd have to pay to put an ad on and then it would run for a set amount of time and you might not have time to be able to, to change it or update it if you're kind of driving in a new position or targeting a new group. With social media, you have that capability to be able to reach your audience, to be able to pulse out your different media, to be able to, um, you know, your blogs and your articles from your website. So it's this cross-channel, omni-channel approach to be able to take that and pulse it out on social media to your different, to your key audience. Um, and, and using authentic photos in there, which we'll get into in the next segment with your brand asset library. So this, going back to omnichannel marketing, having consistent brand library in terms of your logo, you know, what's, what's the right tone that you want to take it across your marketing materials. Photos, photos are key. We highly recommend even doing a, a very quick photo shoot to get a, a build your library. Cause you can keep adding to that over time. You should, you should refresh your photos but really getting that experience of being able to see behind the scenes of your company. Some of our, our most liked photos are ones that we show what we're doing on behalf of our clients. Um, and then, you know, con really considering uh, videos and that impact of videos that we're going to get into throughout this presentation. So video marketing in particular, it has to really be a driver that's on your website, on social, through email. Um, nowadays, we, we understand video is the way to go short videos, like long explainer videos. That's the way people are able to digest information. And lastly, email marketing. It may seem like it's been done. It may seem like the most basic of marketing, but quite frankly, there's such great ways that you're be able to um, enhance your current email marketing. And that's including some dynamic videos. That's including photos. That's including um, incorporating different elements of like your blogs and hyperlinking out to your social media. So again, considering that this omni-channel approach of how you're able to effectively um, work with the right ways to meet your audience. You know, we hear a lot um, about clients wanting to do all of the innovative, cool things, um, and then we'll visit their website. Tell the audience what we find most of the time around these five pillars and why we kind of chose them. So oftentimes we'll see everyone wants to do innovative, new. I heard about this new thing. I'll do this. Then you go to their website and their website, there's broken links. It doesn't properly explain what they do. It's clearly outdated. Um, and that's frustrating. We all know the first thing we're doing is going to our phone when we're thinking about a company or doing research, pick up our phone, click on their website. If it's not mobile first, if it's, if it doesn't easily cleanly tell who you are, you're, that's an immediate touch point where you're going to lose your customer. Right. And today, another thing to kind of wrap around website optimization or maybe more likely uh, social media is companies aren't investing in the Google My Business function, mm -hmm. right? Where that's a big thing now. Uh, people will Google a company or an industry. And if your business comes up and the phone number is the wrong phone number, you're missing opportunities there. Easy. Those are easy things we should be thinking about and doing. Um, irrespective of budget size, who we are, and, or what type of company it is. You know, and if you look as you know, we progress to the next section where we're talking about even websites, uh, there's different phases. You don't have to do everything necessarily at the first go round. You know, there's some clean, simple updates that you can make. And then there's the 2.0. There's the 2.0 where you're connecting. Maybe that's when you're layering a video or that's when you're developing influencer marketing and working with other organizations to cross post blogs that you can post on your website and push across social media. Um, but these are the key elements that you're going to want to look to update and making sure that your website's up to the speed that needs to be. Because quite frankly, that's the first place we go. 
And then secondarily, when you're looking at your social media, your social media is a wonderful way to be able to connect with your audience. And, you know, it seems like there's a, a lot of opportunity there to really demonstrate who your authentic self is. Customers love connecting with the photos of your team, connecting with your business about understanding like your products and services. And there's a large opportunity on social media to do A-B testing, campaign testing, so that you're able to try out different messages, see if there's some new features that you want to explain or, or connect with your customers about. Use that for social media. It's such, you have a, such a broader reach than some other media channels that it just makes sense to be active on there. It's interesting when we were doing some research for this presentation, um, one of the kind of unique opportunities we were able to identify is around Facebook video marketing, because we know that 70% of adults go to Facebook every day. They're spending about an average of 30 minutes there. And we know consumers are making purchases through discoveries on Facebook, whether directly through Facebook or through an ad they saw and then going to the site. Yet only four, we'll, we'll average it up to 5% of marketers are leveraging Facebook video. Easy win. If you're looking for easy wins, like we always are, this presentation just gave you one. Um, now, the quality of video does matter. We don't always suggest pulling out your iPhone and, and shooting something and putting on Facebook, especially if you're an established brand. But leveraging Facebook video when marketers aren't doing it, that is the time. Um, that is the time to kind of understand that medium because it's not, we're not there yet. The business world hasn't caught up yet. So great opportunity for the audience today, I think. And of course we have stats here on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. There are people shopping from all of them. Snapchat, TikTok is, everything is moving very, very fast, the innovation there. But there are some kind of key wins um, that are simple that I think in the fundamental section really should be helpful to the audience. So building a strong brand and photo asset library is, is key. As I mentioned, you know, having on-site photography, whether you're in your office or whether you're around the different like um, service areas that you may work, if you're a different type of business. Um, this is also a great way to be able to connect with your audience, especially in COVID as we're coming out of COVID, but there are less people in offices still, that there are less people that there's, you know, typical traffic in different neighborhoods or, th or through different offices. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, having that ability to connect with your customers, with your photography, with videography, and this consistent brand presentation, it also helps if you want to open up to your um, teams to be able to um, send updates to clients. They've got assets they're able to immediately draw from. So it creates this more seamless experience, both internally and externally. And as I noted, leveraging the power of video, there's a lot of opportunity to take a video. And when you're recording, you're able to have cuts for social media. You're able to pulse it on your website. You're able to even use it as an opportunity to email out to new customers, to existing customers. Um, but it's a great way to showcase your expertise. Show that you're a subject matter expert. You can do interviews. There's vlogs. There's um, television commercials, patient testimonials. So there's a lot of opportunity to really have fun with this, this media, but also at the same time to be able to use it to connect with your customers. And also you can have an opportunity to kind of share with other organizations. And again, email, email marketing, you want to be able to kind of be smart about this. You know, we say there's a great uh, opportunity to organically send out emails, but think about it strategically. You know what your year looks like. You know where there's going to be um, different events that you're at that you're going to want to promote. You know where there's going to be some new services, features, updates that you're making. Make that plan for the year. Have these prepared in advance. Develop the key campaign assets or a template so that when it comes time for you to send out an email, they're all consistent. Going back to that omni-channel approach um, and have timing and schedule. Take it. Take the guesswork out of this. And there's a lot of, of ways that you can still be able to have some new fresh ideas, but now you're being consistent. Really, that's an important thing that we like to communicate is this consistency. So section in a sentence, know who your ideal customer is and then revamp the fundamentals to meet them where they are. 
the future of marketing is here. It's now, it's today, and it might be the reason why 88 of you are still with us. We want to talk about how we start with an innovative marketing strategy in 2021 and beyond. Um, it starts with digital strategy. Uh, we need to understand exactly who we're trying to hit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, Christina brings up this workshop that we do with clients. It's interesting because that might be one of the most valuable sessions we actually conduct because once you know your ideal client and you've identified them, you're not blanket marketing. We don't recommend that. And with digital, definitely the name of the game is being targeted and segmented um, as it should be, right? You don't want to hit the universe with your message if the universe isn't your target market. Um, so starting with that strong strategy is a way to ensure that there's um, a strategic and useful use of your budget. Like it's sound, it isn't uh, wasteful. That's never what we recommend. Know exactly who we're going after, how they want to consume media, where they go for information, what are their pain points, and how does your brand or service kind of alleviate that pain point? Um, that's really the goal of setting a strong strategy. One of the things that we do for one of the hospitals we support in Westchester are very successfully our Facebook live events. You know, challenging for hospitals, for instance, doctor's offices, or anywhere actually where your customers are walking in your doors. Um, how do we get um, the communication messages we need to our audience if they're scared to walk in the doors? Um, that was one of the things that our hospital client was facing. And so they got very innovative with us and we hosted a series of, and continue to host a series of Facebook live events where, where engagement soared. Of course, there was a small marketing campaign around that to make sure that uh, customers and patients knew. Um, but then we got these doctors talking about um, interesting subjects to them mm -hmm. and they got to ask questions and engage and chat um, and, and you think they about it, there's when you're trying to meet with your doctor, one of the things you've realized or any kind of expert for that matter, it's hard to get that time with them. Even if you're going to a live event, you might raise your hand. There might be a, an opportunity to kind of step up to speak with them, but there's always a line. What online in this Facebook live event, more people were able to get their answers, their questions in front of doctors and to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one dialogue. So it's a great way to better connect with people, even though we're not, and, and you know, there's still like live video where you're able to see each other. So even though we're not in the same room, they're even closer to the doctors, in fact, or to the experts that are speaking. And they're, and they feel safe. And that really might be the name of the game today is to ensure at least until we're further along in the pandemic or out of the pandemic, that customers feel safe engaging. Do you want to tell them a little bit about Twitter chats and kind of how we leverage that technology to further our clients' business? Absolutely. So Twitter chats was actually something that we were engaging with this client on pre-COVID. Um, again, they wanted an opportunity to be able to get their doctors closer to their patients. And they knew there were specific topics that they kept hearing about that were people had questions on and um, you know, they wanted an opportunity to be able to, to ask these questions, but maybe it wasn't appropriate for like a live event or an in-person event, I should say. So we developed this strategy to have a system in place for questions that are answered. You know, we debriefed with the doctors beforehand and the engagement was so high because people felt like they were being heard on these Twitter chats. And the next series, as, they, as we schedule these, you know, every month, every other month, um, people would consistently join, even as like some of the topics were similar, sometimes we varied them up. But it was a way to get these consistent followers who were so happy to be able to have an opportunity to, to be able to connect, to ask questions. And we'd even say in the Twitter chats, like, what do you want to hear next time? We'll gear this towards you. It's about that personalization. Like, we understand, like, we're hearing about what some of the challenges were. Um, but, you know, we want to hear it from you and then build it to it, similar to what we were trying to do with this presentation. Thank you. And I see some questions coming through the Q&A, so we will definitely have some dedicated time, which brings me to um, my next fun fact, which is that our production team in here is giving me a nod that we need to speed it up because we actually <laughs> want to get through this thing. Um, and we're so excited. Uh, we were literally cutting slides up until this morning to try to make the time we really want to deliver value. So 
We're going to speed through the next set of slides. We're going to give you a way to connect with us after this, like immediately after this. You're going to get a link to my calendar. Book some time. We can talk specifically about anything that's interesting to you here, but we're going to um, we're going to fast forward a little bit. So, innovative marketing via podcast. Absolutely. Um, I think that that is a way to go today. I think people love podcasts. They're using it. And they, they walk, they garden, they listen to a podcast. You'd be surprised. There is going to be a subset of people who want to hear what you have to say via audio. Our recommendation is to make it a video podcast. So whenever we do our podcast at Inside Copy and Art, um, we have our cameras rolling. We want to make sure that we can amortize that content across multiple platforms, including YouTube. And so audio is great for some people, but some people really prefer video. So for instance, I actually prefer video over audio. So if it's a video podcast, I'm actually more apt to watch. So that's a quick recommendation. Um, social media 2.0, there's so much going on. Yes, it's a favorite. I hate to speed through this, but we did kind of list out, you're gonna get a copy of this uh, webinar. You can snap a picture of this if it's interesting to you, but there's a lot that's going on with social and a lot of ways that businesses, uh, whether B2B or B2C are using social in order to further their business objectives. So video posts, polls like we did, interactivity, right? Because nobody wants to be sold. They want to be engaged with carousel posts. So you can showcase multiple photos. People love to swipe. There's a lot of research about it. Why we love doing this. I don't exactly know, but people do love it. Um, you know, video page headers are an opportunity. I see many Facebook pages are not leveraging. Um, and then we'll get into a little bit of augmented reality, influencer marketing, which we kind of know uh, a little bit about. Uh, shoppable post and interestingly branded story stickers. We can also do another presentation with the BCW maybe on social media alone and we'd have more than enough content. So SMS and text marketing, interesting. So um, originally when I started learning about this being a trend, I thought nobody's gonna engage with a text marketing campaign. Well, I was wrong. 90% um, of SMM messages in the marketing space are read within the first three minutes, higher open rates than email. Um, and 70% of people actually say it's an attention grabber. We see big brands using this, so we shouldn't automatically dismiss it. Don't, because that's exactly what I did. Coca-Cola is spending 70% uh, of its mobile marketing on SMS. Crazy. Uh, I was recently at Nordstrom and ended up getting hit with an SMM strategy. I didn't know they were uh, engaging that way, but it was very cool. Um, and then there's a lot of other companies that are seeing great success with this level of marketing. XR and extended reality. So we might be thinking about or hearing about augmented reality, uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, uh, artificial intelligence. This again is another subject we could spend an entire webinar on just this alone. But just know this is the way that marketing is going. If it feels slightly scary, I understand. We understand. Um, you wouldn't be the first set of marketers that feels that way. Uh, it might be exciting to you if you're an early adopter. It might feel a little scary. Either way, um, we're, we're kind of entrenched in this innovation and it's definitely something you should be excited about. So we list out here a couple of ways that industries like real estate and marketing and retail and healthcare are actually using this uh, kind of extended reality realm. Um, they're thinking that, you know, by next year, it's gonna be a 200 billion plus industry. That's about eight times what it is now. And um, it's gonna be mainstream in five years. So. We don't want to become a dinosaur. We need to learn what's coming. Um, and to the extent possible, we need to embrace it for our brands if that's what our consumers want. And quite frankly, exploring and playing with it sooner rather than later, as we learned in 2020 with COVID, things were accelerated to the digital space um, and with different technologies. And we had to pick it up faster. Some we were already dabbling in this, but it was a perfect opportunity to push forward and, and try new things. Right, because by the time you need it, it's probably too late to start. <laughs> so we, we really want to get our clients on board now. Uh, innovative video marketing, we know video is, quite frankly, I feel like the absolute future of marketing. I think it's more predictable than a human. Um, you can tailor your messages. People like watching it. I think there's a lot of benefits here. And so there's some technology that we're um, mentioning, like drone videography, we're seeing a lot more of that. Um, the use of YouTube and premium online services, that's a way to get the message across. 
We should be thinking about different cuts. Interestingly enough, people like the 15 second on social uh, video, which seems uh, short, but, um, and then there are some brands that are sponsoring YouTube channels as a kind of co-promote way of marketing. Thought leadership content. So absolutely, as you're evolving your marketing into that 2.0 and 3.0, your company, your marketing team should be, uh, and your company should be seen as a thought leader in your industry. And subject matter expertise should be showcased. We believe non-gated, so don't make people put in their personal information for your information as a value-added service. And you can do so with vlogs, which are just video blogs, influencer marketing sponsored content. We write articles for our clients um, and of course, traditional white paper development. This section in a sentence, marketing is evolving quickly. Let's embrace the change. Um, do we have time? What are we, how are we doing on time? I think we might have a couple of minutes. We have a couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, so we're going to get through just some audience specific recommendations before we hit the Q&A. Um, again, we have a, a big nonprofit kind of area, but we want to hear kind of what your thoughts are. About 20% of this audience that were registered at least, um, we're in the nonprofit area. We, we see that this sector had to pivot uh, fundraising events. Mm -hmm. And I think people's uh, prioritization on the pandemic and health and the economy. Mm -hmm. There were so many competing factors uh, over the past 18 months. Um, so we really, if you're in the nonprofit sector from a marketing perspective, want to keep your supporters involved and supporting your cause. Um, one of the things that we find is a good strategy is to use empathy and storytelling. Um, this is a nice way to engage and to get your supporters not to forget that your initiative is still important. Um, interviewing people impacted by the charity videos are, are a good way to go. So if you're doing what we do um, and you're looking for some help, uh, again, we're, we're flattered that you're here. Um, some of the challenges we've seen is the lack of personal contact uh, with our network and our clients. Our goal is always to grow our client base. It makes perfect sense. And we want to be seen as the experts by showcasing ourselves as subject matter experts. That's a good idea for the audience here. Um, let's say you're a PR agency and that's what you do. It doesn't mean you might not dabble in social, but you should really be showcasing your expertise where you're a true expert. And I think that that goes a long way for brands. Uh, BCW did an amazing job with us on this partnership, which Marsha talked about a little bit. Um, and they're gonna continue to provide networking events, sponsorship events via Zoom, but where you can showcase what you're great at with a company or an organization like BCW, do it. Um, we're seeing great success here today. Of course, we have our local media in Westchester. Um, they have sponsorship opportunities, online events. Um, but really, we want to position the company as a subject matter expert where you are. It might be good to ask your clients why they choose you. We do that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, interestingly, attitude, optimism, innovation, that's what rises to the top for us. But it'd be interesting to hear what, what your clients have to say about working with you. Um, and collaborate with other Westchester-based agencies. I have a few friends in the audience and a couple of people who have uh, really tried to collaborate in Westchester, and we're very grateful for those opportunities. Healthcare, our sweet spot. Um, there are so many challenges here. Um, but let's say patients are concerned with going to the hospital or to their doctor's office, um, and, and specifically last year. Um, they want to increase their patient visits um, and improve the customer experience through this pandemic. So telehealth and marketing around telehealth is a great way that we've been partnering with our clients, um, reserving certain days. We saw hospitals doing this for seniors or patients who are immunocompromised um, and taking advantage of the positive perceptions of healthcare organizations. We had a hospital client who was on ABC World News tonight and we pushed them and pushed them to push that out to their audience. They opened their doors during a pandemic and the height of a crisis, and they showcased their physicians and their commitment to the community. That's true, but it's marketable. We shouldn't lose sight of that. Leverage the power of, of your staff of video to be able to showcase like the personality of your hospital and still have that, that human side come through. 
Sure. And I mean, they have the, the, the name there with ABC News and the public media. So I think that was not great, but it was an opportunity. And we, we did advise that they take that. Finance. So clients are concerned about the market. We know this, of course, the economic downturn, um, banks closing. Uh, so they want to increase their customers. We really want to focus on client focused marketing strategies. So no blanket approaches, thinking about and tailoring the market research to figure out what are the needs. Um, I know that personally, you know, our banking and financial partners were reaching out more via Zoom than they ever had. They wanted to talk. Um, and so I think making sure that we were handled from a personal perspective is probably a really good idea that finance people and people in the industry are kind of keeping up with their clients on. So I kind of sped through that. I apologize if it felt too fast, but the good news is you will have an opportunity to hit a link and get on our calendar, get on my calendar. We can talk specifically about what's interesting to you. Before we move to q and I want to see if, well, first, I want to thank you for your time. I think it's been an absolute privilege to speak with you. I have, we have 83 people still on the line. We have Q&A, so don't go anywhere. Um, if you have that one word that you think might be a differentiator or a difference maker, and you don't mind engaging, I would love to see some chat, chatting the one word. Let's see if anybody will participate here. I see Q&A questions coming through. I see some. I see a lot of questions here. Mm -hmm. Google Grants. We have some great ideas in this chat. This I think one of the benefits. I'm sorry. Some good words I'm seeing. Involving, engaging. Okay. I'm Lorena too far up. Marcia. Consistency. Great. Personalized. Absolutely. Thank One you, One of my Tana. favorite words. Yes. So the word we're thinking before we move on to Q&A. Do you want to give it to them? Wait, we still got some coming in. Mm. They ask you answer. I like Thanks, that. Mike. Engagement. Thank you, Stephanie. Relationships. Absolutely. I mean, relationships yeah. are key. It's interesting. It's not going to be what you think. It's openness. It's openness that brought you here today to speak with us. Um, something new. Maybe you know us, maybe you don't. You wanted to learn. It was openness on copy and art and BCW side to partner for this mm -hmm. webinar to bring value to the Westchester community. Absolutely connecting. But, and thank you, John, here's what we know. Marketing is going to evolve and is going to barely look like what it looks mm -hmm. like today in five years. So let's make sure that we don't become a dinosaur as businesses and we stay on track and on trend with what's happening um, and being open to new partnerships in Westchester and beyond. Um, Michael, thank you. We're not done yet, though. Don't go anywhere. Agility. Yes. We got some yeah. great answers coming through. So we got the Q&A going. I got chat going. Let's see what we got in Q&A, Christina. How are we doing on time? Okay. We good? We have a few minutes I to answer some questions? I think we have a couple of minutes. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Yvette or Marcia to give me, a, give me a sign. Because if you let us, we'll keep talking. Yes. So, so chat me if um, I'm running over. I'm going to look at the last question um, from someone who did not want to give their name. So anonymous. Uh, when using polls, do you recommend publishing results? If so, where website? So I think we absolutely publish yeah. results usually the next day. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you're going to create the dynamic where you're asking a question, and people actually engage, they're going to expect to see that answer and response. And yeah. I think it's a great way to kind of mix things up. Um, and then thinking about what you're asking, then how are you using that information? You've asked them for some info. How can you give back to them? Maybe you're asking about some challenges they had. Maybe there's information that then you can give back to them to help them as a value add to kind of help them with their whatever the challenge is. 
Right. Okay. So thinking about, um, John, John, I would definitely love for you to book a meeting with me because I think we need to learn a little bit more um, about what the actual desired outcome for the brand is before we can make a determination about Yelp or TikTok because they're very different and Clubhouse. So I think um, to the extent that we can answer a more general question, we will, but, but certainly would love to connect with you. Um, does Facebook marketing work for B2B? Absolutely. So I think more and more the social um, platforms are opening themselves up to business profiles and business opportunities. And Facebook marketing is definitely um, a way that B2B, I mean, we're on Facebook and we're B2B. Mm -hmm. um, is it a little bit more relative to B2C? Some would argue, but I think that today, if your business doesn't have a Facebook page, it almost doesn't exist. So I think we have to have that presence there. And once you have the content for your social, pulsing it out to the different platforms. If you, you know, if you have a good agency or you know a little bit about tech, you know, pulsing it out shouldn't be a hard thing to do to leverage it across all. That was an interesting question from, from Michael. If a small business has a tight budget, needs to make a decision on where to spend it, where should they focus on a marketing standpoint? I think that's going back to what we were talking about earlier and understanding your ideal customer and then figuring out what's the best way to reach them. So it's just knowing, you know, having to do with more of an in-depth assessment, especially seeing like, what are your goals here? You want to chat or, or call to action? Um, okay. So how soon will you see uh, extended reality? Mar I think we're already seeing it. We are. Right. If you go to a Mac website, you might see your face, their lip color. Mm -hmm. That's an extension of extended reality marketing. I think we're already seeing that. If you're so, on Zillow and you're going through a house, you're looking through a different real estate market, you're able to walk through the house with the 360 views. Yeah. So that's uh, extended. Now it's going to get more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously there are ramifications for every kind of business or brand that we can get into. Um, oh, so besides facility tours is what she's saying. So Mac gives you a good, um, their uh, rent the runway does a good job mm -hmm. of at least body shaping a couple of different shapes to show you how a dress would look on a different body shape. Um, I think big brands are playing with it now a lot in the B2C, but I think it's it's coming. We know it's coming. So I think it's about figuring out how for our brand, not if, because I don't we don't we don't determine if when social media came out, people were resistant. No, no, no. We're gonna stay print, we're gonna stay paper. And um, as we can see, the innovation will continue with or without us. So we really want to be on the bandwagon. What size businesses do you typically work with? Um, you know, they they skew on the larger corporation side, um, but we're open. We're, we're a Westchester agency. We love to support other businesses to the extent that we can help. We always do. Um, but I would say that our clients typical revenue range is in the 10 million to 200 million range. So big corporate. Um, but that doesn't mean we've never worked with smaller companies. Um, we have our chops kind of wet at big agencies. And so big brand is what we've studied and what we're really good at. Um, so that tends to be the clients that call us, um, but we're happy to work with everyone. Let's see if there are any other questions. I think we're good. I think we're good. And if I go to our chat really quickly, participants, Q&A, we have that. We have a lot of great, do. a lot of great, me oh, and thank you. Yeah, so uh, part of team copy and art <clears throat> added to the chat just so that you have it very handy. If there's anything that's interesting to you about what you heard today, uh, but you wished it was a little bit more specific to you, we understand. We tried our best to round it out um, and not be generic, but your business objectives are your own. And so uh, Max, who is uh, part of the production team in the room with me, uh, he put out uh, a link to my calendar. So if there's anything interesting you want to dis discuss, 15, 30, 60 minutes, 
click the link. It'll take you right to my calendar. Book some time. Would be happy to talk to you. Um, it's been a privilege. Elena, so what a great, I'm going to chime in here. I'm yes. Sorry, back. I've been Let me stop sharing. You. Very, very astutely the whole time. But what a great little example of creative marketing to write here, share your calendar. So you don't have to send an email. You don't have to go through that. You're available and you're showing when you're available. So I love that. I think I'm going to start doing that. It's a little scary, right? It's giving up a little control. So no, so on the back end, you control your calendar. Like for it. instance, if I was scared somebody was going to book 30 minutes from now or 15 minutes from now, it gives you a little bit of a buffer time um, right. that you could set. But anyway, I think the answer is Marsha, right? We want to make it easy for people to do business with us. That's great. That's great. And it's a great example. You know, you talked about, and I wrote it down, marketing is evolving. Let's embrace the change. And we've been talking a lot from literally our boardroom this morning to my kitchen table yesterday on what is life going to be different, business life and life going to be different after the pandemic. And we don't really know how, but we know that it will be. And so having organizations and businesses and team members and advisors like Copy and Art and like Christina and you, Elena, leading, leading the way to help businesses continue to grow, continue to be productive, continue to employ people and continue to be creative while embracing this change of all of the new things that were coming anyway, but boy, they came quickly. I had never Zoomed before this pandemic started, or maybe I did and it wasn't so great. Um, and now I'm, I'm all set up, but um, it's, it's you, you really, really provided such important food for thought and more important food for action. And so thank you for being the partner of the Business Council of Westchester. Thank you for all you do for the community at Copy and Art. You are amazing. You did the most professional presentation you possibly could have. And by the interaction and participation of everyone on, please know how much you sharing your expertise. And I underline that word expertise was appreciated by all. Thank you again. We wish Thank everybody you. good health. Yes. Still wear a mask when we need to. <laughs> and um, and get vaccinated and stay healthy. Enjoy. Thank you all. Thank you. We see a lot of thank yous coming through. Yeah. We just want to thank you. So thank you, Marsha. Thank you, team. Thank you, Christina, and everybody here in the room with us on the production side. We appreciate it all. So too, too many more. Thank you. For your time. Great job. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.